Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now let's talk the rising of the shield hero. This time specifically, we're talking Raftalia's blooming love for Naofumi. Now look, if you've been watching Shield Hero up until now, you've seen it. You've seen Raftalia all blushy around Naofumi. You've seen her scouting out whether or not Naofumi has a girlfriend. You've seen her asking Naofumi what he's gonna do after he's done with saving the world from the waves. You've seen her asking Naofumi to sleep in the same bed as her. And you've seen her getting jealous at Philo being so close to Naofumi. We've all seen it. Without a doubt, the girl is head over heels. Conversely, Naofumi has no idea. He's too busy with his guilt and trying to be a good parental figure to notice what's very obvious right in front of her. Like the very obvious signs of puppy love, or should I say, raccoon love. And really the question, why does Raftalia love Naofumi, does have some answers within the anime. Naofumi-sama you know, that scene did a good enough job of summing up what Raftalia was thankful for in Naofumi, but that scene and other things shown in the anime, they don't really paint a full picture of Raftalia's appreciation for Naofumi. So if you're in the camp of wanting to just know more about the two just because you ship it, or if you're a viewer that doesn't get why Raftalia is so head over heels for him, this is the video for you. We're gonna go through, we're gonna point out some extra scenes, we're gonna point out extra interactions, and we're gonna point out some extra rationales that maybe you haven't considered. Now, the simple answer for people in a hurry as to why Raftalia loves Naofumi is just pretty much because Naofumi was nice to her. But the longer answer, it's quite more nuanced, and here we go. Starting off with, how far did Naofumi go to take care of Raftalia? The stuff she listed. The first thing I want to tackle are the points that Raftalia brings up to Motoyasu. While these were good points, the anime didn't do a good job driving it home. As you saw, Raftalia pointed out that she got food and medicine from Naofumi. Now if you're wondering, what's the big deal? Naofumi only gave her medicine that one time. Let me elucidate and paint a bigger picture. While the anime only showed one prominent scene all throughout the first four episodes where Raftalia was actually sick, Naofumi actually fed Raftalia medicine very often as according to the novel. The moment that the child coughed, he handed her medicine. No ifs, no buts, no second question, it just happened. Pretty much as soon as he heard that sound, he gave it to her. This was made more prominent for Raftalia because she knew how much work Naofumi put into making those medicines and she knew that he was selling them to make money for the two. So she understood how valuable that medicine was whenever she received it. And it's important to keep in mind that in this time period, Naofumi was barely making about 6 silver on most days. These guys were really poor so it did blow Raftalia's mind that Naofumi was allocating so many resources to her. Now as for the food, the novel has a bonus chapter that reveals Raftalia's point of view when they were getting food for the first time. It details how wild Raftalia was that Naofumi got her food when she was looking at it without her asking and furthermore how surprised she was that Naofumi didn't just toss it to the floor after it was ordered in order to mock her. We're gonna cover this later, but Raftalia had an extremely extremely rough time before Naofumi showed up. Anyway, that's why those two things Raftalia brought up were actually more important than the anime might have emphasized, because these are quite literally events that changed Raftalia's world. But that's not all. Next up, how far did Naofumi go to take care of Raftalia? The stuff you didn't see. Hey, so remember how Raftalia had a lot of trouble sleeping at night? In order to keep her calm, Naofumi had to sleep near her and sometimes hold her tight to make sure that the nightmares wouldn't trigger and she wouldn't just start screaming. This is probably why Raftalia feels she could get away with sleeping with Naofumi when she's in an older body, but I digress. The anime didn't really show the full consequences of her first night terrors. In fact, we got to see this scene where Naofumi tries to keep Raftalia calm at night. The scene skips to the next day, but that night, Naofumi actually spent it defending Raftalia from balloons all night. 
Since he had to hold her close or otherwise fight balloons, he stayed up the whole night to make sure he didn't let go of her and for some reason, you know, trigger the balloons to come again. And of course, Raftalia noticed it when she woke up the next morning and now Fumi fell to a quick nap. There was another thing that was blink and you miss it. Raftalia wet the bed in episode 2. When it happened, the girl was terrified and curled into a ball in the corner of a room. In Naofumi's words, I didn't know if it was normal for a 10 year old to pee the bed, but I couldn't get mad at her if she was staring at me with terrified eyes like that. What Naofumi did in that situation was simply, he bought the sheets from the innkeeper and he cleaned it himself. All without yelling at Raftalia, other than to tell her to not worry about it. You could be sure that also changed Raftalia's world. Another factor that was skipped in the anime, Raftalia and the ball. You remember that ball Naofumi gave Raftalia? Did you know that was the first time that Naofumi saw Raftalia smile legitimately? But that's not the point. The point was Raftalia was being bullied by a bunch of human kids that were going to take the ball away from her. Naofumi was working in a room at the inn at the time, but the moment that Naofumi saw that, he rushed out and gave the kids the balloon treatment. Point is, yes, Naofumi pretty much beat up a kid, but he was Raftalia's hero after that one. And you know, that, that goes a long way. Being her hero goes a long way in, in all factors. Next factor, Raftalia and her demons. Okay, so one thing you'll see in those early Shield Hero episodes is how rough Naofumi was with Raftalia. Some viewers may not enjoy the treatment, but how did Raftalia feel? There were two big events, the one with the Psycho Rabbit and the one with the dog. Both served to help Raftalia conquer her fears in a convenient progression. She took out the rabbit and got over her hesitance to attack something else, or attack another living creature, and it was a pretty aggressive shot. And with the dog, she was able to overcome the nightmares of her parents being attacked by a similar dog. As aggressive as these events were, Raftalia came out for the better thanks to Naofumi's pushing, and once she's in her older body, we see that she understands why things went down the way she did, which indicates an appreciation for the situation that Naofumi had found himself in. And as one last sign that she doesn't hold ill will about those events, she keeps the knife she used to down the rabbit in a small bag along with the flag she got from her meal and the ball. She cherishes those memories as traumatizing as they probably were. But this helped Raftalia, I guess, not be terrorized by her past as much as she was when Naofumi first found her. But speaking of that flag, let's talk about Raftalia and her heritage. One big factor into Raftalia being biased to the shield hero is that, well, in demi-human culture, the shield hero is known to be nice to the demi-humans. This information came from the extra chapter in volume one. Now in that chapter, it was revealed that Raftalia, like some kids often do, talked about how she wanted to marry someone like her father pointing out that he was reliable and made her feel safe. The chapter also showed her father patting her head. So, when you look over to Naofumi, it makes sense that she's happy with him given that the traits that her father had, Naofumi has to some degree as well. It also helped that when Raftalia was at her worst, she and her friend were dreaming or in her words, they longed for the shield hero to come and save her and her friends. Anyway, the point is, there was already some factors pre-established in Raftalia that made her more fond of the shield hero. And so when Naofumi actually comes through, those extra feelings that came from the way she was raised and who she had as a role model kind of affected and maybe she kind of just projected some of those positive feelings onto Naofumi. And hey, it's been observed that the traits that a young girl sees in her father influences what that girl might eventually look for in a partner. So this parallel between Naofumi and her father as a factor into her fondness makes sense as far as psychology is concerned. But the really big takeaway is just she had already fond feelings and then Naofumi came through and fulfilled those feelings by saving her. Finally, I kind of danced around this before, but how badly Raftalia was treated before? This is one big factor for sure. The anime makes some mentions to this when we first meet Raftalia, but allow me to fill you in with some of the more gory details. Uh, brace yourself if you're the faint of heart. Uh, so a few lines ago I said Raftalia and her friend longed for the shield hero. Well, that's because at its worst, Raftalia and her friend were horrendously tortured. They were strung up and whipped and sometimes fed disgusting soup to keep them alive. Raftalia's friend, Rifana, also had the cough that Raftalia eventually caught. Anyway, they were treated badly for days. As it turns out, Mellow Mark has a certain noble class that likes torturing demi-humans. So, 
Raftalia unfortunately was on the brunt of that. When Rifana unfortunately passed away, Raftalia was beaten and whipped bloody. All the while, she was staring traumatized at the corpse of her friend that was just hung up in front of her. So suffice to say, the guy before Naofumi really broke Raftalia's mind. Which is why everything that Naofumi did afterwards seemed like a ray of sunshine, and I do suspect that could paint a better picture as to why she latched onto Naofumi so hard. It's especially easy when you have that character in a really terrible situation and then you give them that person who treats them even a little bit better. It's, it's not that strange to see a character falling in love with the person who is able to create such a jump from misery to general happiness. That's another factor. Now, miscellaneous points. We're pretty much at the end of the video now, and these final points are just some nice ones that we can end the video off with that, you know, might be worth your consideration. It's important to remember that Raftalia has pretty much been plunged into expedited puberty. We all know how much more intense things get during that time frame. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in just the chaos of growing up all of a sudden, she realized she had new feelings that she may not know what to do with. Uh, secondly, uh, Raftalia might have a bit of a messiah's complex going on with Naofumi. She knows she's the one who sees how much he hurts. She knows she's one of the few people that he can trust. And she knows that he's a good person. I wouldn't be surprised if knowing this, that she's the only person that can protect him, is factoring into her feelings. Like, you know, there is that kind of dynamic of her having this idea that she's a special person. Heck, she gets very jealous of Philo from the moment that Philo's born because, in Raftalia's words, she had never seen Naofumi so happy. You know, because at that point, Philo could have been competing for that spot of who can make Naofumi happy. So, uh, and this happened when he was playing with Philo when she was just born, or when she was just maybe a day old. Oh, and finally, to make it all worse, Naofumi kissed her on the cheek. Who wouldn't get frazzled when their hero made such a bold move? Of course, Naofumi didn't mean it in any romantic way. Or did he? Anyway, no, man, that's kind of the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, now, you know, I'm not really sure how the fandom feels about this. I mean, I personally know how their story ends. But uh, it, it, it was still, it's still worth considering the events that have created the situation for Raftalia and Naofumi. It is important to note, like, Naofumi, he, uh, he did kiss Raftalia on the cheek, and that was something that was skipped in the anime, most likely because they were aware of the optics of the situation. Uh, but it is important to note that throughout all of this, Naofumi still largely sees Raftalia as his daughter. I, I do wonder, there is a kind of that interesting conversation of like just the ethics of the situation with Naofumi and Raftali when you consider that she's a child in a teenager's body. But you know, that would be a video for another day. Anyway, guys, let me know. Do you ship it or are you weirded out by the relationship or are you just pretty much just seeing it as that's something a child would do and you're okay as long as Naofumi doesn't make a move? Let me know what you think down below. I would love to get your opinion. And uh, yeah. Until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day. That's pretty much all for the afterward. I can't think of anything else. I know we're in dubious territory, but I'll just I'll just wait for the comments. Anyway, yeah, till next time, have a great day.